If you're working with backend GraphQL, you may have heard of data loaders, and you might also be wondering, do I actually need them? Well, if you care at all about performance, then the answer is absolutely yes. So in this video, I'll go into what data loaders are, how to use them, and some of the third party tools available to write data loaders for us. Okay, so starting off, we have this really simple GraphQL server. We've got the type post, which has got ID title content, and it's also related to an author, which is the user type. We can then query for an array of posts. So if I jump over to GraphQL Playground and then query for posts, you can see that five posts are being returned. I've also configured the backend so any requests being sent to the database are being logged in the terminal. So here, after executing the post query, we can see that one request is being sent to the database to fetch all posts in one go. Now we can also fetch all of the authors for each post. So let's just do that and re-execute. And you can see that the author for the first three posts is Alice and the author for the final two posts is Pete. So you might expect that this would send maybe two requests to the database, one to fetch all posts and then one to fetch all users. But in actual fact, we've sent six requests to the database. So here's our first query fetching all of the posts and then five separate requests to get just two unique users. So that means that we're requesting Alice three times and Pete twice, the exact same amount of times they were returned in the query. Now this is called the N plus one problem in GraphQL. N being the amount of nested resolvers that we executed and plus one being the root resolver. So in our case, five users plus posts. So let's jump over to the resolver code. So here I'm actually using Prisma to access the database. So in the posts root resolver, we're just fetching all of the posts. And then in the author nested resolver, we're just fetching each user by their ID. Now, because this nested resolver is being executed five times, it means we're making five unique calls to the database. And this is where data loaders can help us out. So this is just a simple example, but you can imagine as your app scales, as you have more data, more nested resolvers, this problem will just be vastly exaggerated. And what we want to do is install a new library called data loader, which you can find on github.com slash GraphQL slash data loader. So just go to your terminal and either do yarn add data loader or NPMI. So once the library is installed, we'll get a new class called data loader. And this is really just a simple cache. So within each of our nested resolvers, we'd call our user data loader dot load method, passing the ID of each user. So in our case, we're requesting Alice three times and then Pete twice. What this will do is unique all of the IDs that were passed in. And then in our callback, we'll get just the unique IDs. So in our case, the ID for Alice, the ID for Pete. We can then use that to create a single SQL query or request using whichever ORM you're using. So in this case, we do select star from users where ID in and then get all the users. This would theoretically return a bunch of users and then we can just return them crucially in the same order that the keys were passed in. So the order is how the data loader knows where to return the results. So in this case, we just return two users. So Alice would re be returned in these three cases and then Pete would be returned in these two cases. So if we were to attach a data loader like this onto our GraphQL context, we could use it in our nested resolver. So rather than call the database directly, we could say let's return context data loaders our user data loader and then load passing the author id now with this set up let's re-execute the same query so we fire the query again and then let's look at the terminal so in this case only two requests were sent to the database one to fetch all the posts and then one to fetch all the users which was executed within the data loader so let's look at how this particular data loader is actually set up so inside the code i've got a file called data loaders and here I've got a factory function which returns all of the data loaders. It's absolutely crucial that you return a new instance of data loader every time a request comes in, which means attaching data loaders to context. And the reason for that is that the data loader is caching information, meaning if you were to just import it directly and use the same instance, you would leak data between different requests. So instead we create a function which creates a new instance of data loader. So in our case, the keys are passed in as before, and these would be the ID of each user. And I'm using Prisma to access the database here. 
So I say Prisma users find many, I get all of the users back. And again, I map them back to the keys that were passed in. Inside the root of the server, I'm using GraphQL yoga and the create yoga method. And this has a method on it called context and it would work the same way for Apollo server as well. So here, each time a request comes in, the context callback would be fired, in which case we create brand new instances of the data loaders and then return it. This then means that we can access those data loaders on context. Now there's also another reason why I chose Prisma for this example. So if I just commentate the data loader code and then comment back the database code, let's re-execute this query. If I jump back to GraphQL Playground and execute, you can see that we're back to square one. One request being sent for posts and then five for users. But if I just change one line, so rather than say find first or throw, I use find unique or throw. Let's save that and then jump back to Playground again and execute the query. You can see that now we're back to only two requests being sent to the database. And that's because Prisma internally has something called query optimization, which is effectively data loaders built in. Now these are only available through the unique methods. So find unique or throw or just simply find unique. Of course, there's many reasons why you still would want to write data loaders if you're accessing a third party REST API such as Twitter or Stripe. But if you're just accessing the database and using an ORM like Prisma, then you can abstract away almost all of the work. So hopefully that explains data loaders in a really simple way. If you like this video, please leave a comment and I will see you in the next one.